So hi everyone, welcome to the fifth webinar in the series of Learn from Industry Intellect. So good evening everyone and thank you for taking your time out and being here with us today. So the Department of Tourism Management of the Faculty of Management Studies of the Sabaragami University organized this series of webinar focusing on the diverse intellectual discussions. So, so far we have already conducted four webinars on different angles starting from our first one, the art of professional tourist guiding, and the second one, the career spotlight in hospitality industry, and our third one, networking and business negotiation. And the day before yesterday, we have completed and we have conducted our fourth webinar successfully, that is basically on the transforming the hospitality spaces to suit the post-COVID lifestyle. So with that, the, today we are moving ahead of the fifth webinar, titled on the strategic marketing uh, for the hospitality businesses. So I'm Sandra Rueni, the professional lecturer attached to the Department of Tourism Management of the Faculty of Management Studies of the same university. And at the same time, Mr. Hiran Dinusha, one of the lecturer, the department member from the Department of Tourism Management also joined with us for the discussion. And- Hi. Yes. And so let me give, uh, some time to introduce the resource person of the today's webinar. So he is Mr. Sahir Rasi, the manager for sales and marketing in Mandarina Hotel Colombo. So I'm, when I'm referring back to his career timeline, he moved to his sales and marketing field in 2003 as sales representative attached to the Peach International, Bradford, England. And he has been working there. He had been working there for nearly one year. And then in 2004, he joined with uh, Swindon, England as reservation manager. And after four years time, he promoted as the sales manager in the same company. And then in 2011, again, he joined uh, Hand with the Aitken Spence Hotel Management as the assistant manager, refers to the, in, sales and marketing and contributed for nearly three and a half years time. So before joining Mandarina Hotel, he worked as a senior manager sales and marketing at Best Western Union in Colombo. And now Mr. Sahir joined the Mandarina. He, he has been the manager of the sales and marketing and he has been joined it uh, as the manager uh, immediately with its opening in 2017. So uh, at the same time, he has contributed uh, for the university in uh, facilitation for the workshops and as well as in arranging the technical tour demonstration for our hospitality management students. So, and um, I have never heard the word no from him. So he is such an outstanding character, personality. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sahir, for joining the today's webinar and uh, taking your time to uh, share well. your knowledge uh, with our students. So, uh, and at the same time, uh, so before moving to the discussion, actually I want to tell you about our ground rules of the webinar. So we have muted all the attendees just to uh, avoid some unnecessary background voices and noises from your end. And if you are having any questions regarding the discussion, you can put them all into the chat toolbox and we will take all your questions into the discussion at the latter part of the webinar. So last 30 minutes has been allocated for our Q&A session. And uh, we are not permitting uh, the individual recordings. So we are uh, publishing and we are posting our full recorded video on our official YouTube page, Tourism in Paradise. So if you have missed any of our previous webinars, so you can uh, watch them uh, uh, by logging to our uh, YouTube page. So at the same time, don't forget to subscribe to our site. And at the same time, click on the bell icon to get some of our future uploading. So I think, uh, Mr. Hiran, do you have anything to add on uh, to the session? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I would like to thank Mr. Sahir for joining us, first of all, and uh, 
for the audience, uh, what I have to ask is, you know, asking the question, raising the question would be the most important thing to have a kind of an interactive discussion so that uh, the, the Sahir also will able to give more contribution if you are asking more questions and the discussion will be uh, a worth one. So I think uh, uh, it's time to... Uh, Hand over the session to Sahil, you know. Yes, Sahil. Uh, welcome you on board and uh, you can start your discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudmi. Thank you so much. And Mr. Hiran, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, first of all, I want to say, you know, um, um, this is an opportunity for us to understand uh, certain things that are happening in the hospital industry and uh, what the University of Sabaragamo has done is really excellent. Getting these kind of webinars online, getting these kind of webinars done with the participation of students is very, very important. We are right now very stagnant. We have nothing to do. To be very honest, we just sit at home. We are using social media a lot. We are watching TV. Uh, we are idling a lot. And uh, with these kind of activities, we keep our brain active. But at the same time, we have something useful to do and gain knowledge from this process. So uh, when you approached me to get this thing done uh, with a uh, workshop sort of a thing, I was already preparing for this, uh, for me to visit Sabragam University and to do it. But then for you to turn around and ask me, say, you know what, that I don't think is going to happen with COVID-19 and all this uh, situation that is happening. Let's do an online thing. It was really interesting because something that I've never done something that I was looking forward to doing. And uh, so this is an opportunity that I jumped at it. So uh, you sold me on it. You know, selling somebody who is used to selling, you sold me on it when you said, can you do this for us? Can you help us? It was an opportunity that I wanted to take it. And so for that, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. You and Ms. Rudmi, you just uh, gave me a great opportunity. It's a learning thing for me. And it's also an opportunity for me to share my knowledge share my experiences with the crowd out there so with that welcome everybody welcome to this session of uh, how we can approach into strategic marketing um, i obviously uh, work for madrina colombo a city hotel it's a four-star city hotel in colombo and you have heard my experiences if not if you have missed anything you can obviously go back on the uh, video recording later on you can see where i work what my experiences are i'm not going to go into that deep uh, you can meet me personally, you can call me, you can ask me about it, and I will give you a brief introduction of where I work. But so moving forward from there, moving on to that, to the subject of strategic marketing. Before we go into strategic marketing, you always, always, always have to understand the main aspect of it is um, the property where I worked for. The property that I worked for is called Mandarina Colombo. It's located in Colpiti. It's in Colombo 3. It's a four-star property. It has got 80 rooms. I'm just going to brush through this quickly. You can obviously Google this information and find out about it. But just to give you a brief introduction, it's got 40 standard rooms, uh, 30 double and 10 twins, 24 deluxe rooms, broken down again into 10 doubles, 10 twins, and 4 triples. And then we've got 16 premium rooms. Uh, eight Again, they can be 8 doubles or 8 triples. And um, as for the restaurants and stuff, we have one restaurant, we have infinity pool, um, infinity pool meaning a pool where you can, it's on the top, it, but it looks like an endless pool. It's not an endless pool, it looks like it's a mirage effect, it gives you that. So that's why it's called an infinity pool. And it's got a gym or a fitness center, it's got a small cafe in the lobby, and we've got these conference facilities. Uh, we've named it as Magnolia, Maple 1, Maple 2, Marco Polo, and Lotus. And you've got the numbers there. It's 150 for capacity, 30 as the Maple 1, 30 for the Maple 2. You've got Marco Polo, which has a capacity of 40 to 15. And you've got Lotus with a maximum of six, six, uh, six people. We are right now doing this while sitting in Lotus. So it, it's interesting that we are able to use that opportunity to, 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 to showcase uh, our property as well. So that's a little bit of introduction about Mandarina Colombo, where I work. We opened again, we opened in, uh, in January 5th, 2017, celebrated three years. Um, tough three years, third year being, this third year being the toughest of all. Um, it's, it's been very hard. I think, I think the entire industry is facing this. We have about 150 to 60 
colleagues who work with us. Uh, friends, associates, you know, um, we work hand in hand to make this property a success. It's a part of Maxence Properties Private Limited. We are a subsidiary of Maxence Properties Private Limited. Before we go into strategy, you have to, you, we will talk about this in depth, but the most important, the crux of it is the competition. The competition is, for us, Mandarin and Colombo as an individual property is also, you, I mean, if you're in Colombo, if you come to Colombo, research about it, read about it. If you're in Colombo, you probably know about it. Ozo, Cinnamon Red, you've got Ramada, uh, Colombo, we've got Marino Beach, um, which has been about a year and a half, a year, year and a half, I think. And then we have got Jipping, Colombo 7. Those are the most important uh, properties or our main co-competitors that we look at. So we have to, I, now that you know about this, you know the basis of my strategic uh, marketing where I'm going to take my strategy forward from this point onwards to identify or to show you what strategy is all about. But again, uh, all of this, what I will share with you, what I will take, talk to you about and answer about will mean to nothing. And I mean nothing. It does not mean zero. It just doesn't mean anything. If you do not have one important aspect right in any organization or any marketing platform, and that is customer service. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you have to have customer service spot on 100% right. If you don't have customer service, no matter what plan you do, what strategy you do, is going to absolutely fail. It's that simple. It's, it's, it's no brainer. If I, if I can include singular into it, because if you don't have customer service, there's only one boss um, for any company or any organization. And that boss is the customer. If you can uh, do things right. And if the customer, if the customer wants, I mean, basically you can say, if you don't do things right, the customer can even fire the boss. The customer can even fire anybody in the company. Uh, basically, it says the customer can fire anybody in the company. He can simply do it by spending his money somewhere else. Um, I mean, sir, sir, I won't say sir, Mr. Sam S. Walton. He's the CEO of Walmart. He said something very profound. Literally everything you do, any concept perceived, every technology developed and employed is directed to one object in mind. Whatever gadgetics that we have, whatever technology that we use, whatever portal of selling that we use, whoever you use as a person to sell your products has the one uh, objective, pleasing the customer. If you please your customer, you achieve a sale, you achieve your objective. And then that will lead you in the right direction to achieve your strategy. So moving into that strategy part of it, um, the customer's perception of good or bad service is the measure of your success or failure. So if the customer says you've done something really good, it's a tick. Okay, I'm heading in the right direction. If a customer says, nah, it's rubbish, I don't like it. That means you are in the wrong direction. You're heading in the wrong direction. So you have to get your customer service right before you plan any strategy. And you have to include customer service in your strategy at every point. That's the most important thing from my point of view. Um, some might say differently, but for me, that is the most important thing. I always look at customer point of view uh, for every aspect. So moving into customer or uh, moving into marketing or strategic marketing, I will show you a very, very simple video. Try not to laugh, try to absorb as much as you can from this. This is something profoundly, very, very simple, but profoundly very, very important at the same time. I'll just try and play the video. I don't know if you can hear it. If you can hear it well and good, um, but just it's just a two minute clip. Uh, just uh, let's be silent and just listen to this. Oh, what happened? Okay, let's play this. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, what happened? Let's see. Okay, let's play. 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 Okay,
right i hope everybody enjoyed that little clip i i, I hope you had fun watching it i'll just give you a brief idea a small idea why i put this um everybody wants to sell you stuff uh, everybody will always try to sell you stuff nobody would love nobody likes i will say nobody likes to be sold stuff if somebody came home and wanted to sell me stuff if somebody if i go to a shop if somebody tries to sell me stuff i don't like it similarly nobody likes to be sold stuff but remember one thing people always like to buy stuff people always like to buy stuff you go to a supermarket you see so many random stuff you never thought that you would buy it but then you 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 went to buy a, a bottle of water you ended up buying something uh, for about 1000 rupees something you bought all this stuff it's it's how they place the product it's how they give you that approach they brainwash you into it this is what happened sales and marketing is all about touching your heart is not about touching your wallet the moment they approach you in a in a sentimental way trying to get you into your heart they will definitely make sure that you spend some money and this is what the entire idea is and this idea was given to me by my managing director when we started this operation of mandarin akalambo he shared this video with me on whatsapp and he said this is a small clip for you good hunting watch this bring us some sales and the moment i watched this i understood what he meant by it and this has been running through my head ever since and we've used this tactic always it works profoundly it works very very well very simply you touch somebody's heart you give them what you exactly want to give them and they'll always come back to you with more and they'll spend a lot of money with you and your organization it's very simple so i just wanted to share this with you this will help you a long way so moving into it um about sales and marketing uh, or into this thing we have for a strategy to implement a strategy you have to understand what is sales there are uh, several things couple of one of the most important thing is the old theory of sales old theory of sales is sell 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 the steps of effective selling processes where um let me just see if i can get that slide for you right right the effective selling processes where you would have to this is the old way of doing things mind you this is the very old way of doing things where you would have to take some leads you know all the leads are given to you on paper so and so called me uh, uh, somebody came and met us here somebody came and met here you went and met somebody at there so you collect all those leads name addresses telephone numbers and then you filter through them who is important what can i sell him is he good customer for me can i get something sold through uh, through him can i make a sale there so you take all those leads and then you learn and you study um, you pre approach them before you meet them before you go to them you study about them you understand uh, what their requirements are and then you gather all the information about them um, and then you slowly approach them when you approach them you first of all call them uh, can i come and meet you sir 
uh, I want to discuss a pro possible prospect. I remember you discussing, you informed something about uh, some uh, businesses that you were doing and you were having some people coming over. Can I just discuss about that? You know, will there be an opportunity for me at Mandarin at Colombo where I can get some of your clients to come and stay? So you approach them. And then you give them the crux, you give them the information about the property. We have a four-star property, sir. We have this, sir. We have that, sir. Swimming pool, sir. You know, or like that person said, you know, sir, you take that two pana, sir. Dozen, take two dozen, sir. Go there, sir. Good, go here, sir. So you, you keep giving them all the information that they need to hear to give you that information back and say, yes, I want the rooms. Do you go with that information? And you tell them the story about the product and then the benefits of it. If your customers come to my hotel, so they will have a fantastic time. I guarantee you that much. They will have a peaceful time. They are coming here for work purpose. They're not coming here for fun. When they come, they need to have a good night's sleep. I can promise you that, sir. My rooms are very quiet. You know, the rooms are soundproof. We have a massive TV. They can watch TV and fall asleep while watching TV. Wouldn't that be fantastic? You know, after a hard day's work. So then the people enjoy all the kind of things. So, and then he will say, Ayyo, this person doesn't need a TV. That's where, that's where the objections come. He doesn't need a TV. He just needs a beer. He just needs to relax a little bit. So those objections come. Then you have to closely maneuver through those objections. And once you maneuver through those objections, you then close in on the deal. He says, no, give me an opportunity, sir, please. Let me serve you once. Let, let that guy come. Let that guest of yours come. Let him come and stay with us. You give them an opportunity and then you get the booking. And then you get the booking means it doesn't mean that you end it. Hurry, I got the booking, the job done. What about the next booking? What about the next 10 years? You need to keep at it. It's the same process. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's like, it's like, it's like a monkey chasing after his own tail sort of a thing. So you keep doing the same thing again and again and again. It's a recurring thing. That's the old way of doing things. That's what we were um, brought up to do in sales and marketing. And that's what we were taught to do. Uh, so we had to constantly go out. And um, uh, then once you meet the client again, you say, thank you very much, sir, for that one piece of business. Can I get some more? Can I get some more? Yeah, then like Oliver Twist. You know, Oliver Twist was given a bowl of, uh, what is it, tender? He drank a little bit. He was still hungry. Sir, can I have some more? Sir, can I have some more? So we are like Oliver Twist now. You know, poor hospitality people still going and doing sales and marketing for everybody. So that is an effective old way of doing sales and marketing. But then now we come into the strategy. Again, strategy of the old world of doing things is push. Where um, the hotelier will always push. The hotel will always push the agent. We didn't go to the customer directly. We now went to the agent. We went to Ceylon Roots. We went to Aitken Space Travels. We went to Walker's Tours. We went to Jet Wing Travels. I'm just naming the top top uh, DMCs in the country. We went to all these agencies and Machang, honey, can you give me some business? Do you have a group here? Mr. Hiran, you know this very well. We used to come and, you know, beg and howl at you. Say, can I get some business, please? Can I get at least two rooms, two rooms, please? Everybody at home is power and please can you help me? Can you, you know, give us some booking so that we can make some money, the hotel makes money, we get salary. So we used to we used to talk and we used to talk and talk and Mr. Hiran used to get tired of us and say, Ayo, we want to take a kari kam record in one room. You know, at least give him some rooms. Let's let let's 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 make the deal happen. Sometimes it was uh, uh, like that, but some, most of the time we, we got business. Sometimes there was no business. Right now we are in a situation where we do not have any. It's nothing to do with the agent. It's nothing to do with the DMC. It's nothing to do with anybody. It's simply because of the um, viral uh, pandemic that we have right now. So we have to uh, go with the flow right now. But we are trying a lot of things. Um, that is the push strategy. We have a push. Uh, we have we push the agent. Then the agent is also pushed to. Uh, push the customer. Aren't you going on a holiday, sir, today? Aren't you going to a vacation in Sri Lanka? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Spend some money here with us. So we indirectly push the uh, DMC and the DMC then pushes the customer and then we get the business. That was the push. And then we have the pull strategy. Works two ways. Pull strategy is where the hotel will uh, approach the customer directly. For example, we go to a trade fair. 
we meet a lot of people in the trade fairs we tell the trade fair people you know when you want to come to sri lanka come in uh, april may that's the lowest season that's when you can get a good, really good deal and when you come to sri lanka see i gave you really good information no? why don't you talk to jetwing travels why don't you talk to walkers travels we have a very good relationship with them eight conspens travels you talk to them we have very good relationship huh? you know if you want something silon route silon routes they are the best in all the chauffeur guys and everything and you talk to them about it so so we push the customer to these agents saying that don't come to us directly please if you come to us directly these dmcs will you know get upset with us you come through these agents we push them in the right direction saying these agents so then these customers will then go and talk to the silon routes and whoever these agents are eight conspens walkers and them i want to go to sri lanka book me mandarin at kalambo when the customer asks for mandarin at kalambo agent has to oblige agent can't say no no mandarin at kalambo no no i'll give you i'll give you some other property in uh, unawatano or something no no i want to go to kalambo you give me mandarin at kalambo then agent has to oblige agent will then call us will demand from us then we will also say ha ah, come i'll help you. no problem come i'll give you 100 dollars no i'll give you 80 dollars no i'll give you 1000 dollars so then we play that game so that is the old way of doing it uh, of uh, of sales and marketing where we pull where we pull the customer towards us so i hope i hope i'm not too fast and i hope you can understand uh, but if you don't understand you can always pop a question you can tell me sudh me or mr hiran that you know uh, shahid is a bit too fast ask him to slow it down a bit and i'll tone it down a bit so the old way of doing things is always be closing always be closing we go out for sales you are not allowed to come to the hotel you're not allowed to come to the workplace without a deal you go somewhere uh, to meet some agent or somebody you always come out with business you always have to come at least 1 2 3 at least 10 rooms uh, uh, for the entire period you have always have to come with business that is always be close that's the abc of old school old school of sales and marketing old school strategy like i'm i put a picture here of a sales guy of a car salesman because that is the toughest job of selling a car the guy already has a car you are going to sell him another car how are you going to do that so it's very tough i i if i would not be able to do that kind of a thing so but it's, but it's it's very tough so that's why i put a picture of a sales guy there you see he's literally bowing down he's got the cheeky smile on his face he's is kind of like ane please sir mage car ka gun as you know please buy a car from me sort of a thing so he's kind of almost bent towards pleading for you to buy a car that's the old abc's of selling a car so the new world of sales the new world of sales which we are now getting used to it we were getting used to it i think about 5 6 years back it has it, it it was already there but we were boomed we were pushed into it and moving forward i think we will be pushed even further and the new world of sales is um, this is it everybody can see you got booking.com you got expedia you got agoda you got a trip advisor you got flipkart you got ebay you got all this amazon you got all this selling ways of uh, selling and meeting the customer now i don't have to drive to an agent i don't have to go to somebody's office to meet them although i still do although we still have to we are old blood we still do that but at the same time there's a new opportunity new way of doing things also the new world of sales which is this all these online travel agents and booking portals and everything it's another pot of soup with so many ingredients in it and and you have to you know stir the pot very carefully here it's a pathway which is very tricky but at the same time very very interesting this is the new world of sales this is where most of you will go into it i think most of you are students uh, studying in the university and when you are doing studies in university and once you do uh, get out of this uh, educational platform when you go to your career platforms you will have opportunities in this new world of sales uh, even if you turn out to be travel agents and stuff you will have opportunities to go into this you will have a lot of connections building up with all the uh, travel agents we call them opa online travel agents or online travel platforms uh, where you sell your product for other people to buy by using visualized pictures by showing them visuals of your property information of your property 
So what is the new world of sales? The new world of sales is very simply, again, there's an ABC, attunement, buoyancy, and clarity. I'll break this down. I'll explain it to you what attunement is. Attunement is you have to understand what the customer's needs are and what the customer's motivations are of uh, buying a product or, or, or going into a holiday or going for a holiday or something like that. So you need to understand the motivation. Now, earlier, old world of sales is where we didn't understand the customer's motivations. We went and spoke to the customer and we asked them if there's any requirement. Can I have some bookings? Can I have some rooms? This and that. And we got the deal done. But the new way of doing it is where you have to understand the customer's needs. You have to understand his motivations of going to purchase that product. And then you have to listen to the customer also. Now, um, earlier or in the, in the olden days, or when I say olden days, not, not very far away, but uh, the old way of doing things is where you would actually go and speak to the customer. The customer would be so bored. He'd be like, oh, when is he going to finish? Sort of. You know, he'd probably fall asleep. On now, it's about getting the information across to the customer where the customer can actually listen and it's interesting for the customer. The customer wants to know more. You know, these advertisements that come up when you're watching uh, TV or when you're watching uh, um, um, an episode on YouTube or something, you get this advertisement and you, you tend to listen to it. What is it saying? Some new product is being launched, something that is interesting to you. So it's, it's a way of um, tuning the customer. Um, understanding the customer, it can be broken down again into two. You're tuning the customer's focus onto your product, but at the same time, you're understanding their motivation and you're tuning yourself also to understand what the customer wants. You, you have to have attunement for the new world, uh, new world of sales or how new thing, things are done in the new world. And then you have also have buoyancy. You know, even the new world of sales, uh, there's always rejection. Uh, you might shoot at um, thousand uh, inquiries. You'll only get one successful booking. You'll only get one successful booking coming out of that. And that does not mean that you should be disappointed saying, ah, oh, today I didn't get many bookings. I'm so disappointed today. I worked so hard for this contract. I didn't get it. No. Keep trying. You have to understand why some things don't work, some things don't work out. You, know, you have to be very optimistic in this game. Once you are very optimistic, um, you would be successful even more. And then moving on to it, I'll just explain it to you. B is for boys. You see, what I just said to you is, is, in, is in a diagram. You know, you have all these thousand leads. You take all of these thousand leads and then you identify all these thousand leads. You say, which is good. Okay, can this work for me? Okay, let me just test it. Let me just identify, can this uh, inquiry become a... Uh, a possible lead for me. You call the person, you call the guest and ask, what's your requirement? The guest might say, you know what, I want a property in down south uh, Colombo. Uh, sorry, down south in Sri Lanka. When he says down south in Sri Lanka, you can tell him, you know, I don't have a property in down south Sri Lanka, but I have a property in Colombo. Will that be of interest to you? If he says yes, you can proceed with him. If he says no, no, um, we want a property in uh, in down south to have about 600 rooms. I it's not going to work for me because Manchester Club only has 80 rooms. So that's a lead that I cannot pursue. But I can keep that contact details. I can keep that references of the customer for another funnel for a later use. Who knows? He might have another lead for me. Say that okay, 30 people, 40 people booking. So you never lose it. But for this purpose, for example, say we then. Filter it down, filter it down, filter it down. Then you go to the last 10 customers and then you approach them. And those are your real customers from those thousand leads that you have. That's the buoyancy. So you keep filling the funnel. Next thing. See, you keep filling the funnel. Inbound sales and the outbound sales. You can see the two things. Inbound sales is the customers who come to you. And the outbound sales is the customers who you go to. Say, for example, there's a customer who comes to my hotel asking for accommodation. Um, I will go and talk to them. I will meet them at the lobby, somehow speak to them, secure the deal. They want to come and stay at the property. Job is done. They are staying at the property. But then there are people who I have to go to. I have to go to the banks, NDB bank, people's leasing bank, so and so and so and so forth. I go and meet them and I get the business from them. 
and then I go and speak to me speak to some of the agents or travel agents also and get the business tour. So that is all those leads coming, all those leads coming, and then we filter it again, and then we distribute it, and then it becomes ten. The final number of final confirmed bookings that we get is very less. Not discouraging, but this is a sign. It's a sign of how things work. Proven way of doing things. And the last uh, thing about the new world of sale, uh, selling is we had attunement, we had buoyancy, we had clarity. Clarity is you have to understand who are you selling to. It will be much more easy if you understand who you are selling to. Now, Mandarina Colombo, who are we selling to? We are selling to corporate clients, we are selling to uh, travel agents, uh, we are uh, selling to leisure market travelers. When I say corporate clients, we are selling to people from India, we are selling to people from China, we are selling to people from all over the world who come to Colombo, who have companies who are working in Colombo for their business purposes. They come, they stay for two nights, three nights, they do their business meetings, official meetings, and then they go. When we say leisure travelers, we are not selling to people who are coming and staying here for 14 nights. We are not selling to people who expect a beach in Colombo. When people like that inquire from us, we tell them directly, look, we are not a beach property. We are a city hotel. We prefer for you to come and stay here for one night, two nights at the beginning of your trip, before you go ahead for your trip. And then we would prefer for you to come and stay here at the last bit of your trip when you are really tired after your trip. So that you can enjoy, relax, pack your bags, go back to your homes. So that's the way of understanding where our customer base is. So you, I mean, it's again, another way of putting it is don't be greedy. You can't have the entire pie. You can only have some of it. Leave the others for the other people. There are so many other boys, you know, Marino Beach, Renuka, the competition, that I mean, let them have it if they can have it. Or there are so many other properties. So you give it to them sort of a thing. So once you have the clarity of who you want to sell to, your strategy again becomes very, very easy. You know what you do want to do. You have your attunement, you're perfectly tuned, you're tuned into FM or AM radio, you're perfectly tuned into it. Your customer is also tuned to it. And then you know your leads, you know which customers are good, which customers are not going to pan out, then you have clarity. Once you have all those things uh, perfectly aligned, then you go on to your strategy. But we have still not, I'm, I'm talking about we are doing strategy, but I've still not come to the main core idea of strategy. The main core idea of strategy before we get that, you have to understand the objective. Uh, my strategy, for example, I'll give you a very uh, good example, um, is um, um, cutting an onion a strategy? Is cutting an onion or cutting chicken a strategy? No. Uh, so, uh, the strategy is how you're going to do it, the step-by-step -step process of doing it. The objective is uh, to cook a nice chicken curry. How are you going to get through that objective? That is the strategy. First of all, you have to wash the chicken. You can't just take the chicken and cut the chicken. You have to wash the chicken. Then you have to skin the chicken. Then have to, okay, darling, would you like to have leg pieces today for lunch? Or would you like to have, uh, you know, chicken, uh, devil chicken or chili chicken? What do you like? To identify the uh, this thing and then you make the strategy how you're going to cook it you need chili powder you need coconut you need uh, onions so those those little little parts that you add up that makes the strategy and those things add up to the objective so first of all before we do a strategy we have to understand the objective the objective for me for my hotel for us in sales and marketing for hospitality industry is to sell the hotel its products and its services very simple Easier than making curry. Very easy. Sell the hotel, sell its products, and sell its services. We have the services meaning the rooms, the restaurant, conference, events. We try and sell all of those. So once we identify the objective, we then come into the four most important principles of uh, marketing strategy. Now we have the objective. The objective is sitting right here. The objective is to sell the property and its services. How are you going to get through this objective? You can't just say, okay, so I'm selling, selling, and sell. No, there's a way of doing it. You have to walk the clear path. And to go to that path, you have to have four um, key principles. It's like these four key principles are your tires of your strategy. 
if you have one tire buckle you will fall off the vehicle sort of thing so you have specialization you have differentiation you have segmentation you have concentration specialization is which area do you specialize like i said before we specialize as a city hotel um, we cater to the corporate market we cop we cater to the transient transient means people who come stay for one night and go those transient markets uh, we cater to uh, leisure travelers somewhat of a leisure travel market and we also uh, cater to meetings and events mice market people who come for meetings conferences and those kind of things. so we identify our specialized area and then we then identify the differentiation what is so unique about your property um, people and are always often ask is usp people say people think you know usp must be some really technical term no usp means your unique selling point what is the part of your product that is more unique than any other but any other person's product we have so many competitors for example mandarina colombo Jetwing Colombo 7, you have Ozo, uh, you have um, uh, Ramada, all these properties. They are all hotels. They are all four star, five star. They have rooms, they have beds, they have mini bar, they have this, they have TV, they have telephone, they have all these services. What is unique about it? You have to look at your own property, you have to identify what is unique about it, and then you have to sell it to the people. This is what is different from us. You can ask this question later. I'll explain it to you later. What is so different about Mandarina Colombo? And I'll come to that. So we identified our differentiation point and then we went ahead with it um, in the hospital industry. And then you go into segmentation. Segmentation is where you identify which customers you cater to. Now, do we cater to um, like the beach kind of beach going crowd? No. Do we cater to uh, the people who just want to sit and relax and sunbathe, then you know have a have a relaxing time? No, we are not that kind of property. We are a hip property, modern property, always rotating with our reservations, always having an occupancy in and out, in and out, going um, occupancy after occupancy, check in, check out, check in, check out, sort of a thing. So we identify what our segment of the market is, and then. Then you concentrate on the customers. You concentrate on the customers and you identify the best way of reaching to the customer. How are you going to reach this customer? The, the way of reaching these customers would then be using the marketing tools that you have. I mean, uh, earlier, I mean, we still do it. I mean, but, but the old way of doing things was you go and personally meet them. But now you have modern ways of doing things, modern ways of concentrating on that particular thing. You can have Facebook where you can actually put an advertisement on Facebook, you can boost it, you can fine tune it to cater to a specific audience. Between, the, say, if you want to cater to an audience of 25 to, 30, uh, 25 to 35 crowd, you can even put it on Facebook saying, I only want this advertisement to be seen from between the age of 25 to 35 age people. So what about the page person who is 65 years old? The advertisement is not going to focus on him. Advertisement is going to directly hit that person's computer who's between 25 to 35. So he constantly sees that at this point. So you focus and you concentrate on reaching that uh, market. So uh, those are the four tires. You can, you can, I mean, these are the things you can remember. Uh, the four principles of marketing strategy, I should have named it as four tires of marketing strategy. You have to have this. Uh, one flat tire and the entire strategy is gone uh, out of the window. So again, before you do a strategy, now you will need these things so you will need a hotel brand you can't just say i'm marketing a hotel and just market a hotel who are you marketing what is the market what is the hotel that you're marketing you have to have this hotel branding i'm just going to show you this you have to have this it's the logo mandarina colombo it's got we've got it everywhere we've got mandarina colombo on the this thing, see, American Water is giving us the water. So they branded their product on our bottles also. So it's American Water, but it's provided by Mandarina Colombo. You got the notepad which says Mandarina Colombo. Even got the pen which says Mandarina Colombo. So it's called branding, branding, branding. You have to brand your product in every possible way that you can, in everything that you can, so that you can show. And branding and even this presentation as well, we have Mandarina Colombo logo. There you go. 
<laughs> so it's it's called branding. Uh, I mean, it's it's an opportunity for me also to to market my product at the same time, but at the same time to uh, impart my uh, whatever little intellect that I have onto the audience, to the students who are watching it. So you use all that and marketing tools. This is a marketing tool for me. A bottle of water. Somebody who's going to come to this meeting room to have a conference, he's going to use this bottle of water. He or she. So then at that time, they'll be looking at the logo, Mandarina Colombo. So it's a marketing tool for me. But if you think about marketing tools, you have more advanced versions. You have Facebook, you have got Twitter, you have got WhatsApp, uh, you have got all these internet portals like uh, booking.com, all those. These are marketing tools that you have. And you have email campaigns, you have SMS campaigns, all those marketing tools all come in handy. And then you move into the location. Location uh, can only be explained in three simple words. That is location, location, location. Those are the three simple words. If you want to understand those things, what I, what I meant by location, 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 if you have the wrong location, you cannot sell the uh, property. If that location is not anywhere suitable, again, you cannot sell that property. If that location is in a location where, in a place where it's, it's very difficult for people to get through to, it's not going to sell properly. If I have Mandarina Colombo in Pidrutalagala, it's not going to sell properly. I'm not going to be able to reach the customer. I have Mandarina Colombo in Colombo. It's in Central Colombo. It's in Colombo 3. It's close by. It's in the proximity or the location. Where is it around? You have to look at the location in points of what it can reach. If a person comes that in that in that, in that into that hotel or into that uh, vicinity, where can he go? How far are things? Uh, so you have to look at the location from that point of view to understand it, and then you look at competitive analysis for your marketing strategy. I informed you about it in the beginning of the session, and I also mentioned about it at places saying Mandarina Colombo's competition is so and so and so and so. So you have to look at competition. It's not just saying that they are my competition. You have to do a complete analysis, um, taking their rates, their facts, their figures, what are the services that they offer to understand what competition is. And then you also have to identify um, your services that you're going to promote to overseas buyers. You cannot just sit in the hotel and say, okay, today I'm going to sell Mandarina Colombo. Today I'm going to sell Jetping Blue. No, you can't do that. You have these trade fairs that are happening overseas. You have OTM, you have ATM. OTM is, um, um, you know, overseas. Uh, is it called ATM? Yeah, Arab Travel Mart. It's called ATM. You have uh, OTM. OTM is not there. You think ATM is there, Arab Travel Mart. And then you have the, you know, um, a travel trade fair in London that happens. Then you have Berlin uh, that happens in Moscow. Then you have Sate trade fair. So all these trade fairs that happen, you have to attend to these trade fairs. That gives us an opportunity to showcase our hospitality or hotel industry products to overseas clients. That also becomes part of your strategy. So again, um, you can strategize, uh, but you have to do it in the right way. Um, now you know, now you know you want to uh, make the curry, for example, you know how to make the curry, you know which curry you're going to make, you know all the ingredients also, but then you can't, uh, if a curry takes half an hour, 45 minutes for you to make, you can't just flap a, snap a finger and make the curry. That's a long term approach. 45 minutes is a long term approach. The short term approach is let me get the onions cut. And then the medium term would be, let me saute the onions first. Let me nicely put it in a pot and let me stir the onions, let them become a little flavor, put uh, all the karapincha, rampa and all that. Let me, that's the medium term approach. Long term approach would be to put the chicken inside with all the spices, water, everything and nicely make the curry, wait for about 45 minutes, relax, watch some TV, you know, while the curry is getting made. So again, I'm breaking it down to, a let's say, um, you're all intelligent people, but dummies way of putting it that's the strategy short term long term medium term and long term you have to have all those three aspects for your strategy to be very very successful so moving on to that i'll just give you a brief introduction about short term 
short term is increasing sales either to overcome a problem in the short term or as part of planned growth the main idea is usually to generate sufficient sales to fill an existing production or operational capacity when i say existing production means you have sold 80 you have 80 rooms you have sold 60 rooms but you have only 20 rooms to sell from that 20 if you sell at least another five or ten rooms then you're achieving your objective sort of thing your short term approach should be that now in this given current condition of covid 19 pandemic where we have no business at all our main focus is the short term approach we are not focusing on the long term at all we are not even focusing on the medium term at all that is out of the window right now we are only focusing the short term which is generally about three months two to three months time period what are we going to do uh, can we do something to activate ourselves in the next two to three months so you always look at the short term first uh, and your strategy always has to approach the short term first and then tackle the medium term and then the long term so loss of one no more significant bookings we lost every single booking that we had and we lost a lot of customers also a lot of the people who booked with us they cancelled the event and then uh, we have new and increased com uh, capacity coming online with all the hotels empty capacity has increased again all the hotels have 100 percent rooms to sell now earlier we had 10 percent rooms to sell uh, jetwing had only three or 10 15 rooms to sell daily um cinnamon red had no rooms to sell because they were always sold out mandrana colombo was always sold out so the market in colombo had only 10 or 15 rooms a day to sell but now everybody has rooms to sell everybody has rooms to sell means we have more and more increased capacity coming on that plus we have new properties coming in so our short term approach should be to tackle these three things the loss of significant more bookings um, um, and loss of more customer accounts one or more customer accounts and to supplement the new increase capacity and why should you identify and understand the causes of this uh, of these three reasons how can we mitigate those things then you can actually put a strategy in place to approach the short term i'll give you a very good example our short term approach right now is to put out a package for corporate customers in and around colombo uh, there might be people who are coming from uh, um, far away from colombo but who work in colombo who have companies in colombo now with the current situation where the curfew is coming today tomorrow there's no curfew and then three days later there's another curfew we don't know what's going to happen we don't know the number of cases are going up and down up and down so we don't know a person might come from uh Polonaro, has work in colombo but he cannot go back home so we short term we approach that we put out a uh, package we have these kind of people can stay they are sri lankans they're locals they can come and stay um, they can take advantage of the opportunity they can stay in the hotel they can get their work done but at the same time go back to work the next day be fresh so we give them the opportunity short term again we have so many clients who are stuck in sri lanka who are stuck in colombo who have had no flights to go back they are staying in one particular place for two months they are going crazy sitting at home i you know the feeling you sitting at home for two months blows your mind you don't know what to do you know sometimes you shave your head you go bald sometimes your hair becomes gray you know sometimes you don't know what to do so, so when these kind of things happen imagine yourself in a, you put yourself in the customer's point of view there are so many people who are staying in hotels stuck in one room for two months they want to go out they want to change of scenery change of atmosphere so you target those audiences and you sell your product in a short term approach and then you start with existing customers uh, you speak to existing customers as in the people who are already stuck in your hotel who are already staying with, uh, with you you speak to them as like Ane, please don't go uh, please don't go uh, yeah i'll give you a special rate i'll reduce a little bit more stay with me for another one month and then you have the follow-up leads you have follow-up leads like you know that okay there is this quarantine thing happening where all these jetting hotels where these uh, so many pro popular hotels have been uh, given as a quarantine center how have they done it can you approach these government officials speak to them and say can i give my hotel as a quarantine hotel for you how does it work what is the rate that you're going to charge so all that aspects you follow all those leads those little information that you get from the market you follow up those leads and then you have the competitive threat 
competitive threat is find out if there are new and strong competitors has the competitor launched a new or improved product or service now in this scenario in this short term approach what is our competitive threat our competitive threat is that all the hotels are empty all the hotels are doing the same thing that we want to do everybody is doing the same thing they all they also want somehow uh, people to come and stay with them uh, so they are also doing campaigns they are also putting uh, promotions out there and they are also giving discounts come and stay with me i'll give you 60% discount you know we have seen these kind of things happen with uh, down south property especially when there is a, a, a vacation that comes up or when there is a dark lull period they give all these day outing packages and all the stuff that comes up so this is because they have so much of competition there in in, in that space they want to try and uh, get the best out of it and then you come to the medium term now you are getting to a little bit of a harder scenario short term was easy is cutting the onions no job done we are masters at cutting onions now now we are going to the medium term medium term is, uh, term is where you cut the chicken and you marinate the chicken and nicely make sure it's not too big but not too small but it's quite a good quantity sort of a thing so medium term approach is once you have established a good and sound short term approach it is working to increase the business potential once you have 10 15 20 rooms in the short term once you have a stable platform for the first two to three months like you're having your conferences are starting slowly businesses are starting slowly again you have 15 20 rooms daily then you start becoming a little bit greedy all right 20 becomes 30 rooms now then we visa koma de kiya kar ganna bal moko they visa kamara isa thiru isru the kamara visa we sold 20 rooms at 80 dollars now the next 20 rooms you try and sell it 100 dollars you increase a little bit you then that becomes your strategy again how are you going to approach that so you prospect for targets identify those customers whose attributes of current uh, who are who have attributes of current customers but won't or don't buy from you don't buy from you yet now you know for example um, um demo tire company buys from you they have customers coming and staying with you you know the demo uh, is staying with you but at the same time you know michelin is another tire company who is in sri lanka for example who also has kind what's the common they are all tire manufacturing companies so you have a success story with demo where demo clients are coming and staying with you similarly then you approach michelin also you approach michelin and say you know what demo is staying with us they are very happy with us they are also tire company you also tire company they are happy with us you will also be happy with us can you come and stay with us please help us out we help you you help us you know you try and give them exactly what they want but at the same time you don't you don't you don't um, uh, what can i say you don't go down on the quality of it but maintain the same standard that you are providing to another competition for example another another supplier or another business prop, uh, for example and you try and prospect for new targets and then you go to the customers perception now um, i will come i will explain to you about this in a little bit more detail later when you have a possible question this might come up but uh, it it comes into differentiation also when you have a question about differentiation this might come into prior, into play but customers perception is if a customer has a negative image about your property or about your product or about your service you will not be able to sell it you have to get that negative image out you have to implant a positive image you have to offer an excellent service see again customer service comes into play i told you from the beginning customer service comes into play so you have to have an excellent customer service you have to have an excellent excellent track record and constantly you have to checking not checking to the point where that person or the business gets really annoyed with you but you constantly check with them saying sir how was your guest ma'am you had sent so and so clients i spoke to these clients they were really happy with their stay they really enjoyed their stay they said that they will probably come back again next month is it true i just want to check with you because you probably know better so can, is there a possibility can you let me know when are they coming so i heard they were happy did they give any positive feedback to you so you constantly keep checking the customer and their perceptions about you if they have anything negative to say you have to sort it out you have to clear it out you have to clear that negative image out and then 
you have to highlight all of this by using marketing posters. This might backfire a little bit on you. Because if you identify and if you highlight all of your success stories online, somebody might uh, get a clue from it, the competition might get a clue from it, and they might steal your business. So you have to be very clever. Marketing process highlight using advertising technology such as FB Instagram brochure. So if you're these days, we don't have much business. We are doing uh, restaurants and food uh, and deliveries and stuff. So we take all the items that we prepare in our kitchen with our chefs. We take videos of it. We take pictures of it. We put it on Facebook. We put it on Instagram. We let the people know that there's something happening at Mandarin. We have we keep them know, uh, let them know that this is what we're doing. Uh, this thing and these are the kind of things that we can plan on doing medium term. Valentine's is coming. Do something for Valentine's. That's medium term. That's uh, uh, after three to four months. Kind of thing. And then you also have discounts in the medium term. Now you have the business coming. Then in the medium term, you give discounts to customers. Um, Thirty-five percent off. Come and stay with us. Even if it's an existing customer, you give them a discount. Attract them more. Coming and stay again. You know, Mister. Um, you know, Mister. Mister. So and so X Y Z came and stay with us. Uh, three months ago, now you give them another discount saying, Mr. XYZ, this time you come with your wife and children also. Last time he came alone. So you give them a discount again, this time to bring his wife and children also. So you get more business from them. And then you do outdoor sales and promotions and trade fairs. Like I said earlier, in the short term, uh, also you do this, but in the medium term, more importantly, you go out, you meet all the representatives in the trade fair, other different companies, different organizations, different travel agents, overseas travel agents, you meet them, you try and promote your business. And then you come to sales, increasing sales volume by reducing the price. This is not very advisable to be done in the medium term. Price drop, I don't like it, but it's when it's 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 something that has to be done. It's it has a it has a very bad image in sri lanka and in colombo price drop uh, you know we are a very price sensitive market and uh, and whichever market that we go into uh, whether it's china or india we immediately drop the price because we create a price for ourselves uh, abc company reduces price xyz company will also reduce price why because abc reduced the price because we all want to grab the same customer so by reducing the price we drive into a price war, and this is uh, all it should can be done in the medium term, not heavily. It should not be done very heavily. Sri Lanka is a victim of this, heavily reducing the prices, and Sri Lanka has a very good opportunity of not doing it here onwards. Why? You can ask in your questions. I'll explain it to you why it's a very good opportunity for us not to increase uh, or reducing the uh, prices. Now. Now we come to where the part of uh, the chicken curry is now getting made, where we sit and relax. Now we are watching TV and chicken is getting, it's a long term approach. We, don't, we are not going to think about it right now. It's, it's, it's very long term. And this is the luxury of time being able to plan your business growth, set goals rather than reacting to immediate problems. You have um, two cancellations today. That's today's problem. You have uh 80 rooms cancelled uh, in the next two years and hey, that's not a problem two years no? i have two years to sort out that problem by that two years i'll fill that 80 rooms no i'll fill 160 rooms that's a long term uh, thinking don't worry about your problems now you leave them to be sorted out later um, that is you take step by step to sort it out so most businesses operate with a gross margin of 15 to 20 percent uh, that is their profit margin. They always look at 15 to 20% profit margin when they're doing a business. If they have 15 to 20%, even travel agents do that. When we give them something as a rate, they will keep 15 to 20% as their markup and sell it because that's the best thing to do. That's the uh, that's the fair ground to play. And to do that, long term, you have to promote your business uh, to existing users. You encourage, again, People who have stayed with us, you have a database, you have all this client information in you. You uh, 
exploit that information, you abuse that information and reach out to the customers and encourage them to come and stay more and more and more. You know, Mr. Patel has stayed with you from India. He has stayed since 2017. Now, due to COVID-19, Mr. Patel has not come to Sri Lanka for the last six months. Now you reach out to Mr. Patel and say, Mr. Patel, when are you coming back to Sri Lanka? Let me know. I have a specific real good deal for you. You come, I'll give you a really good deal for the next one year's duration of your stay. You can have this specific rate. So you're thinking for the next one year in the long term, speaking to Mr. Patel and giving him a set deal for the next one year. That is long term thinking. That's the long term approach. And then you also have an opportunity to win competitors' business. You identify what are the businesses that the competitors have. You speak to them, but not in a bad way. Not in a bad way like where the competition really feels hurt by it. And this fellow came and grabbed all my business and went, no, how? He was a really good friend of mine. He spoke to me. We all sat and ate in the same place also. But still he took my business. It's a cutthroat industry. It's a industry where a lot of competition is there. But you have to take the business from the competition by identifying their weaknesses. Not by saying bad about them. Identify their weaknesses. And then you superimpose on their weaknesses by showing your advantages. For example, I'll give you a so and so. Sir, so and so property is in golf face, some side of that corner of golf face, sir, where there's not a, you know, not even uh, anything close by. We are here in, in Colombo 3, sir. We have these so many restaurants close by. We have a shopping mall right in front of us. Uh, we have uh, the casino next to our hotel, sir. So we have to show all those advantages. We expand on their advantages. We take their weaknesses and show their weaknesses. Um, ex how can I say? Uh, ex uh, embellish, uh, uh, embellish, embellish their weaknesses. Uh, so that people will identify, yes, he is telling the right thing. If I go to that place somewhere in Golfe's corner, I will have nothing to do. I might as well stay in Mandarin at all. So it's kind of an uh, information that you give them. But you have to do it in the long term. You can't just expect it to be given today and for people to understand it today. You have to keep repeating the same. It's like mantra actually. You have to keep japa kara kara in You keep repeating the same mantra, 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 and then someday people also start believing that mantra. You know, and when you see people start believing it, you're you're sort of selling yourself in the long term. You cannot do it in the short term. It's a long term approach. And then you have your um, product itself. Oops, I need to go. Yeah, here we go. You have your product itself. Um, McDonald's does it really well. It's a lesson that you can learn from McDonald's. Products determining what our prospective clients want and offering a range. See, McDonald's does any kind of burger, any kind of uh, meal that you want. McDonald's wants people to have fast food. McDonald's is a fast food restaurant. McDonald's wants people to have fast food. What do they do? They do burgers. They want You want rice? They'll give you the rice, fast food. They cook it in a such a way that they make it look like a fast food. Poof, it's there with you. It's really fast. You want a chicken wrap? Yes. You got it as a fast food. So they make everything really fast. They got so many varieties. They want, they know the customer's requirements is fast food. They give the customer exactly that fast food. Everything is made into fast food. So you also have to identify your product and you have to offer a range of products. And the range of products, that's why we have got standard, deluxe, and premium, three categories. There are people who afford the standard who cannot afford the deluxe. There are people who can afford the premium. They will go for the premium product. So you have to have a range of products. And then you have to your, do your pricing. The pricing strategy should support the product decisions. Showcase a mid-range product to high-end customer, thereby upselling at a higher margin. So you show them a mid-range product. It's very self-explanatory. And then you sell them a high price. So we American apple leg gun or the Lanka apple leg gun. Lanka apple leg or American apple leg. Oh, American apple. Oh my God, I'll have the American apple because the name American apple. So you think that it's from America. It's not American. It's grown in Sri Lanka, somewhere in New Orleans. But the brand, it was the seed that was brought into plant, it was American. So it's called an American apple. The similar thing here. You show a local product and, and you sell the higher product to the customer. And the similar thing, 
Um, uh, you show a price a lower end product slightly higher than the norm to entice the customer to what buy what they really intend. You know, for example, that that customer has money to spend. If a person if a person is a casino goer, he goes to the casino and he plays in the casino. Um, this is something that we learn in the trade. We know that he has a lot of money. If he's going to casino and playing, he has some kind of a, a, a fortune with him. So you're not going to sell him a standard room. You're not going to sell him a deluxe room. You increase the price of a deluxe room a little bit by about 30, 20, 30 dollars to about 20 dollars lesser or 10 dollars lesser than the premium room, and then you give it to him. What do you think he will buy? 10 dollars difference? Ah, it's okay. I'll take the premium. So you sold the premium to him by showing him a. It, it, it's called embellishing the price of the deluxe category a little bit just to sell the premium. Just you just slightly inflate it a little bit so that you, you get your objective. Again, marketing strategy, your objective, sell the room. Strategy is inflate the price a little bit, show a little bigger, a bit of a bigger price, job is done. And then you have the promotions. And then you have uh, the long term uh, aspect of it. You can have promotions on the different uh, features of the product that you offer beyond the price. That is, um, it's uh, 34 square meters big, spacious. The room is given for two people, but it's suitable for four people. All those additional features. So when a person looks at it, when a person reads about it, when the person sees it, they're like, wow. I'm getting a room that is big enough for four people, but only use it for two people. Wow, that must be a big, massive room. I'll go for it. I'll take it. And then you promote it in that way. You're, you're not giving a discount or anything. You're emphasizing on the product. You know, it's a very quiet room. You get the sea view from this room. You know, you get all these features, facilities. You, you try and emphasize on the product. That's an all thing. Again, like a mantra, like a mantra. You keep repeating the same thing again and again, but you do it in the long term, not in the short term. It can be done in the long term. So the, we covered this, I think, in the, in the front, in the start of it, when we went into this thing. But the clients to be approached for the strategy would be long-term agents, uh, sorry, local travel agents, foreign travel agents, corporate companies, government ministries, NGOs. And now we have the web and online bookings also. You have to approach all of these people uh, to make sure that you get your objective, which is to sell the hotel and the rooms. And then you can plan a strategy, but then you have to have a checklist. I cut the onion, I cut the chicken, I put the chili powder, I put this, I put that, I put this, I put that. And then you, after you cook the chicken, you say, you are the lunu danda mutukunani. She can already. What happened to the lunu? So you mark the strategy. You plan the strategy, but you tick the boxes saying, okay, this is done, this is done, this is done. That's where the checklist comes. But part of the checklist, the three main important part of the checklist is market analysis. You have to identify the people who are likely to patronize your hotel, stay in your hotel. Markets are based on customers' needs. You cannot just have a hotel and say customers are going to come and stay. If the customer does not have a need for him to stay, he's not going to come and stay. Very simple. And then you have to have a market analysis because it, because it will help you to identify ways in which we are most likely to be able to connect with our target audience. We have to uh, uh, do a market analysis where we can identify the customers and then by identifying the customers, we know, okay, these are 20-year-old uh, 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 travelers or foreigners, but then we can approach through Instagram because they're always 24 7 on Instagram. These are people who are 60 year old people, 60 year old, 70 year old people are not going to be on Instagram. They are going to magazines and newspapers. Let's us, let us approach through uh, magazines and newspapers. So you do the market, you identify your customers, and then you can approach it that way. And more specifically, uh, if we can identify our market audience, then we can again effectively approach our customers. And then the most important thing I told in the beginning also, I mentioned it also, competitive analysis. Competitive analysis does not mean you just identify the uh, competitor saying so and so, that ding, 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 all these are my competitors. No, you have to identify what's their sales, how many rooms have they sold. You know, a lot of the Colombo hotels always call each other daily in the morning. Ask them, how many rooms did you sell last night? What was your revenue last night? 
And what was your AR or not last night? What was your ADR last night? You ask that information from one sales guy to another sales guy, one reservations to another reservations. You identify all that. And then you identify their prices and products. You go online, you do your research, you ask them, how much is your rate? What's your going rate, Mashak, these days? And uh, when it's come to Shahid, I'm going to uh, you know interrupt you for a moment <laughs> for share my idea as well. You know, when it's come to travels as well, uh, we are also sharing the same thing with the travel agencies. You know, we are calling to the Shilong to jet twin and all the things, you know, in Italy market, what is the packs, what is the packs, what is the packs and all, we are checking it. So it's, it's the same thing, you know, whether it's hospitality industry or whether even if you're selling shoes, Bata is going to do the same thing in DSI. Sorry, wait a second. I think they're switching off the lights. So, yeah, so the thing is, uh, whatever, whatever the strategy it is, it's going to be the same thing. You know, whether it's a BATA or DSI, DSI guy is going to call the BATA guy and um, he's going to check with the other Kia uh, sales, yeah, the, how is the strategy? Same, every company, whatever you're selling is the same thing. So that's competitive analysis. And then you also check customer service attributes also. Is the customer staying at Cinnamon so and so, Jetting so and so, uh, you know, Amaya so and so? Is he happy? How can I approach these customers? Is so and so at Mandarina happy? If he's not at Mandarina, if he's not happy at Mandarina, I'll take him away and put him in my hotel. So, those kind of things that you have to look at. And then you also have to look at the market position. You can't uh, fight for a piece of business that is not within your market radius, within your zone. Like I said, if, if, there's a, if there's a group of business that is going to double, no point in Mang Mithra, only a Khada, only a Pella, and Andala, Podila, and Dangala, Kada, it's not going to come to me, no matter what I do, because that's a booking that's going to double. No matter if I tell a travel agent, and hey, please give it to me, help me out, it's not going to come. It's much like the itinerary is set in such a way, much like the itinerary is set in such a way, so it's, it's like that. So you have to identify your market position where you are right now and you have to pitch for that market. And then you have to do internal analysis. Internal analysis is we'll also want to explore the factors such as our existing products and services, our sales volume, uh, our profitability, our customer mix, our customer mix as in corporate, travel agents, all that mix. And then we have our database of customers. So we have worked for three years for this hotel, for example. All that information we take, we call those customers, we write to those customers, we approach those customers politely, kindly, and then we try and negotiate with them, see how they can help us again, how they can resume their business. They will anyways come to Sri Lanka. We know that. How to get them to come and especially to come to us. And also, it's very, very important to identify uh, these things by meeting your frontline colleagues. You cannot ignore your internal uh, team. You have your frontline managers, you have your housekeeping, chefs, everybody. They're also part of the sales team. If a, if a, if a guest is coming out of the room, if a, if a housekeeping boy goes, hm, I don't want to talk to you, that's a bad impression. You have to talk to the guy. The guest is coming. Hi, good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Did you have a good night's sleep, sir? You know, so those kind of little things. So you have to talk to them constantly, keep these internal uh, um, uh, colleagues or associates also happy. So that's an internal an analysis. So that's also part of the strategy. If one fellow falls down, means the entire bandwagon is gone. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen. And the same thing. And then once you have that, the final thing, almost, almost, I think we are at the end of it. It comes to responsibility and accountability. One thing in the hospitality industry that is very clear, very adamant that we have to be is. Uh, uh, don't say it's not my job. I can't do this. I don't know. It's not my job. You can never say that. If something is given to you, you take the responsibility for it, you go with the task, you take accountability of it, and you do it the best abilities that you can. Or you find somebody who can do it with you and learn from it and do it. Assigning the responsibility. More than simply putting department names or individual names, you say, uh, when you're doing a strategy, right, your part of uh, your part of strategy is to make sure the customers are checked in 
as soon as they come in within five minutes what's the procedure that you're going to uh, put in place do that procedure and get it sure done if i give that to the front office manager if front office manager turns around and says ayyo ek mata karanna beh uh, then it's not going to work so you tell the front office manager front office manager has to take the responsibility of it he has to train his staff his colleagues his associates and then he has to put that in practice part of the strategy and then you have to ensure that the people are committed if a guest is coming to check in at the hotel and if the guy at the reception is talking to the girl at the reception egalandena malak kada kada innu kota the guest is going to feel really upset about it he is going to feel really rude about it he is going to write some bad reviews and feedback about it they have to be committed to the task we hospitality industry people believe that this is not our job this is our profession this is our life blood am i correct mr you know this is our Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. So this definitely. is our blood. This is our blood that runs in our veins. So we take it with passion. You have to take it with passion, and you have to be committed to it. And understanding the exceptions and everything is part of it. But most, most, most importantly, for a strategy, before anything, like customer service, customer service is the most important front end of it. Back ending is it's like making a sandwich. You can have a bread. I think everybody is going to be really, really hungry after this because I'm talking a lot about food dolls. You have the bread slice here on the top, which is the customer service. You have the filling, all this strategy, all the jargon that we discussed now. That is in the middle. The bottom sandwich piece is the budget. You have to have the money to spend in the short term, medium term, and the long term to make sure that the sandwich is nice and concise. if you don't have that budget in place you can't have a strategy you can't do a marketing uh, plan or you can't do anything you can't achieve your objective so in order to achieve our objective we need a budget budgets are often established by using historical spending now in 2018 you spent 1 million can i do the same job by spending uh, less than 1 million this time or do i need to spend more you have to understand that and then you have zero based budgeting which is also option where you have no you have started a fresh and then you continue with zero based budgeting where you put objectives and plans in motion and hopefully you will come out through from the other end so that is a uh, part of it and uh, i think uh, but before i go into your questions and stuff there are certain things that i want to uh, share with you from my personal experience that is you know Uh, you have to be very trendy these days you know you have to be very hip these days you have to have your instagram you have to have your facebook you have to have your twitter but you have to be very trendy you have to have all the cool things that everybody uses these days you have to be trendy so that when you meet a client you don't look dumb uh, you don't look uh, like a made man from a cave that you know the technology you know the modern lingo that is happening you know you have to be very savvy uh, trendy at the same time and you have to be data driven you have to have information uh always i always believe one thing information is wealth what have information from the market that you hear somebody from jetwing spoke about something somebody from so and so spoke about something some army commander talked about some quarantine uh, hotels happening here and there all that is information you keep it in your head you write it down you take all that information as data and go through that and uh you have to be personable in person means if somebody comes to meet you approach you wants to talk to you you have to be approachable you should allow them uh, to give you an opportunity to talk you have to uh, allow them also to let you talk and be specific be to the point and quick on the uptake if there's something to learn quickly grab the opportunity learn something new this zoom meeting thing is very new to me i didn't never knew about it if i was told about it about a week two weeks back it took me about a week puff we are here we are doing it something new for me to do it and it's compelling you have to be very compelling in your arguments not in arguments as in being negative argument but if in if you are proving your point to the customers and everything you have to be very compelling to the customers no so trust me if you stay here at madrena colombo if you stay at uh, this property in gaul you'll be very well uh, happy and the most uh, one last thing would be you have to be organized no matter what you do don't have a clutter of things uh you have to be very well organized you should know what your stuff is where you like a phone you know you know which apps are 
what app is doing what similarly all your paperwork all your files on your computer be very well organized so if a customer wants some information you can put us within two minutes yeah give me two minutes sir. i'll have your contract sent to you right away but 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 we did the contract we sent it to him he's amazed why because you're so organized this guy is like i am not even going to open the contract i'm just going to give the business to him just because he sent me the contract in two minutes they're going to be that pleased with you and uh, most importantly above everything is the seos uh, it's it's something that i added very last minute it's the top one the first first and uh, foremost is seo savvy it's called uh, seo means search engine optimization it's a technological term it's used in uh, google analytics and everything uh, google is catching up a lot these days so you have to be very seo friendly seo friendly means you have to use really keywords when you're talking to people also you have to be very um, sensitive to what they like to hear sensitive to what they don't want to hear uh, so you have to be very sensitive in terms of what they like to hear and, and speak to them in the language that they want to hear yeah and uh, so those are little things and yeah uh, from my little uh, ending point i want to say you know thank you to the university uh, of uh, sri lanka the sabargam university of sri lanka for giving me this opportunity and to the faculty of management studies um, miss uh, hiran and miss rudhi uh, you guys are amazing you know i met you in person you always held your end and you always uh, been i think your students are really lucky to learn from you guys you know you 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 uh, really done well for your university and for your and for your faculty so keep it up and thank you thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, for giving me this opportunity um for me to express my points for me to share my views and for me to impart whatever little wisdom that i have to the audience thank you so much okay thank you very much sahir for actually i think uh, you have uh, elaborated all these things in a very clear way with the example so it is really e i think it might be really easy for our audience to grab all the points from your side and uh, so thank you very much once again um, oh, well. yes so once again uh, on behalf of the department of tourism management for joining hand with us and delivering and sharing your knowledge with the undergraduates okay sure. so uh, with that i think uh, we are having and we are moving forward to the q and a session yes yes um, so let me give few seconds to uh, peep into the questions uh, given by the audience Vidhi Dishanayak is asking an ice question as well as uh, Shanika Karuna Tilaka. You know which one to be select first, Sandarwan? Ah, uh, we will take. Uh, shall we uh, give first? Uh, first come, first out. <laughs> or uh, last come, last out. Sorry, Sorry last come, first out. Uh, uh, let's go for the last one first, no? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So. Uh, So I will read the question for you, Mr. Shahir. Yeah. Shani ke karuna thi lagi saasin about uh, how you explain the term sustainability inside uh, of the city hotel. Right. Sustainability. Uh, sustainability itself is a very vast uh, subject. If I break it down into uh, layman terms, sustainability means. how are you going to sustain your business running through and through and through without falling down so in terms of a city hotel um the question is how can you explain the sustainability in terms of a city hotel so in terms of a city hotel what is the business that you have to sustain we have corporate clients who we want to sustain in our portfolio we have travel agent and leisure business that we want to sustain in our portfolio and we have transient um uh, businesses that we want to have and then we have the local clients also to sustain so how are you going to sustain all these businesses you are going to pitch at each and every different market at each different in different intervals and you're going to give them something that they want uh and which then which that they require 
say for example if there is a corporate uh, clients who are coming constantly to your hotel you have to give them uh, that requirement for their corporate stay uh, they are mostly looking into bed and breakfast so you offer them the bed and breakfast package uh, suitable for them you can't give them a full board package so similarly you you, you target those audiences and maintain your sustainability but at the same time when you say sustainability is also um, keeping your ship afloat uh, right now the hotel is like a ship we don't have any business how are you going to sustain your ship right now by uh, cutting costs cost cutting measures uh, by uh, recycling your paper whatever the printouts that you take unnecessary printouts don't take unnecessary printouts i would say but whatever the printouts that you take do it on a double sided paper or you use that paper again for some rough work or sort of thing you know uh, waste management you know if instead of uh, providing staff meals you know you provide staff meals uh, which is adequate you don't provide uh, so much of food for five people you provide enough quantity so those kind of measures that you do will allow you to sustain your business but at the same time uh, maintain it in such a way where uh you keep the ship afloat one of the very good examples that we need for sustainability was to cut cut down on the uh, electricity and that was by um, closing most of the flows that we did not use we kept one flow active where we had three or four guests staying but all the other flows were shut down we asked those guests to move into one particular flow but at the same time daily for half an hour we switch on the lights and for about 15 minutes in each every room intermittently we switch on the air conditioning in each room for 15 minutes so that the air conditioning is also kept running so that it does not break down but at the same time you save on the electricity cost also so that's one of the things and i hope i've answered your question so those are the kind of measures that you can use in hotel for sustainability yes so actually the second part of that question is asking about how we are going to deal with different kinds of markets like uh, different mar- uh, market clientele okay so right. it's about so, basically oh, how, yes how we are going to deal with different kinds of markets see sri lanka is a, is, is in a very good position right now i would say before covid 19 Sri Lanka was in a bit of a tough position because we had so many uh, markets to deal with. We had Germans, we had Russian, we had Spain, we had uh, Indian, we had Chinese, we had Japanese, Korean. You name any market in the world, Sri Lanka was uh, branded as the number one destination. Uh, also, so a lot of the markets, a lot of the nationalities wanted to come to Sri Lanka, but at the same time, a lot of the nationalities also wanted to go out of Sri Lanka. chinese always traveled everywhere uh, europeans traveled everywhere uh, but now what has happened sri lanka is in a very good position because covid 19 sri lanka has managed covid 19 situation very well for us as a government as a people as a nation we have done really well we have very uh, less number of fatalities uh, the number of cases also none of the other european countries have been able to successfully do it so a lot of the chinese lot of the indians they are like soda bottles right now yeah. you know you know when you shake a when you take a coca cola bottle and when you shake it really hard and you open the lid what happens everything just pops out it's just like that indians they are stuck at home they can't travel chinese they were stuck at home they can't fly anywhere now wuhan is closed so and so is closed this city is closed everything is happening so they are all bottleneck they are all stuck inside now they have the money to spend so a marketing strategy right now to approach them would be to speak to all our travel agents give our travel agents the right rates not reduce the rates so much because sri lanka is in a good position for them to come they have nowhere else to go they are not going to go to america they are not going to go to europe they are all going to come to sri lanka so we as as a as a as a curse i don't say it's a curse it's as a blessing covid 19 has put sri lanka in a rightful position so our marketing strategy is going to be really easy pricing it the right pricing don't say you're going to price it $1000 you price it around 900 dollar margin 
you give them attractive discounts but at the same time these people are stuck at home they want to go on a holiday they really want to, the chinese and the indian monks they want to come you give them some value additions a free airport pickup a free airport drop perhaps give them some room upgrades give them a welcome gift or sri lankan tradition now we are not going to shake hands our sri lankan tradition is the eye bow we do that with a smile you know you give them the garland at the airport so if those kind of things if if we all the hotels can incorporate those kind of little things as a, into our strategy i think we will be able to easily target the indian and the chinese into coming to sri lanka because one of the most important is they have no where else to go they have to come they yeah. are Okay. Yes. Yes, I think. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, 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 he was answering the the very first question that we have been skipped as well, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. For uh, for your mm. reference, Mr. Sahil, you know, I will repeat the first question as well. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. Can you please explain? Uh, do you have any marketing programs in this pandemic situation? What are the strategies that you use to market your service ah uh, so in this in this in this uh, in this pandemic situation in this covid 19 life that we are living right now the strategies that we use to market our service is 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 online based everything is online based you cannot go and meet a person right now if you are going to meet a person you have to have a mask right now and you can't go and shake a hand right now you have to say are you bo and sir how are you so it makes it makes life very difficult and right now people are very apprehensive you know uh, the moment you sneeze somebody thinks that you got corona so it makes it makes uh, life a little bit different we have to get used to those things we will get used to those things we are a resilient culture we are a resilient country so we will get over all those things but the strategies that we use are mostly are mostly Uh, online based we approach our clients online because everybody is glued to their facebook everybody is glued to their whatsapp twitter we are getting used to those things so 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 we approach those people the clients through email campaigns even corporate companies they are now resuming work slowly when they are resuming work we send them email notifications saying that we are here don't forget about us madrana club is working so and so is still working if you need anything let us know and you kind of approach them through that kind of an angle so i hope i hope uh, that that part of the strategy answers the first question yes um, so mr sahil uh, could you remember the question that we answered regarding the sustainability uh, yes. the same person is uh, clarifying the question again and asking in, in relevant to the sustainability so she needs to ask uh, how we can how you can embed the sustainability into the marketing strategies oh, right very good question that's something that i really like to answer okay how are we going to embed sustainability into our marketing strategy how are we going to let the customer know that we have embedded sustainability customer market strategy little simple things when you have an email that is going to a customer at the bottom you can put a small notice and then please do not print this email if it's not necessary please help recycle please save mother earth you know you know what i mean stuff like that you can put stuff like that plus at the same time our packaging uh we do food delivery the food delivery that we do we package it we package it in recycled um containers made out of recycled cardboard or you i mean not that we take the cardboard go home and recycle it ourselves we buy it from vendors who supply recycled boards that way you are you are helping mother earth but at the same time you are creating incorporating uh, that uh, sustainability into your marketing strategy because marketing strategy remember we spoke about budget at the end spending less getting the same product spending less so we use all that aspects we use all those uh, kind of things into the marketing strategy so rather than using a4 paper uh, a brand new a4 paper if you can use uh, a recycled paper that's even better for you so those kind of things you put into the marketing strategy and um, uh, include it into as a, as a part of sustainability 
Hope you. I hope I answered that question. Yes. Yes. Actually. Okay. And if I pick another question uh, sure. from the audience, uh, so I will pick the Himansa. Himansa's uh, question. Uh, Himansa or Himansa. Anyway. So it is basically asking about what is the difference between the term the digital marketing and the marketing. Uh huh. Digital marketing and marketing by people to people. I think I think you I think Himans Himans Shah Himans Shah. I think you like that video. That's why you probably asked this question. See see the difference. I'll take that video as a very good example. See the difference of marketing people by people. When it's a person to person, you have that. You don't have the physical connection, but you have the. Um, close relationship, face-to-face -face relationship that you have. You can talk to that person because every action, there is some kind of a, um, uh, you know, a feeling attached to it. You know, the way you, when that, when that person was, was uh, Sir, Pana Dika, Dusin Dika, he was doing like this. That's a, that's a, that's a action to say Pana, so he's doing that. And then he was like, Bandinang, sir, Bandinang, and he was bowing down. So that's, a, that's, that's something that you cannot do digitally. That's a people to people interaction that you get, and that helps you sell. So, marketing people to, buy, people to people is quite very different. But digital marketing is another trend. Digital marketing is a trend where you can make creative, appealing videos, uh, posts, attractive posts where people can visually. Especially comes in handy when you're doing food sort of a thing. We experienced it a lot. People, first of all, eat with their eyes. And then only they eat with their nose. And then only they eat with their mouth. Why? Because when they see it, they like to see, wow, what a fantastic dish this is. This looks really nice. Can I eat it? And by the time you go to do it, you take it to your mouth, but you smell it first. Mm. Ah, so that, isn't it? You know, mama cooks a dish at home, you go, mama, this looks really delicious. And then you start eating it. That's how it is. So digital marketing goes in that direction where you please the eye and go into the senses of the people. Where marketing by people, uh, marketing to the people by people is an emotional approach where you touch their heart emotionally. Okay? Yes. Right. Uh, Sorry, uh, yes. in the same time, there's another part as well, no? Yes, I think it's, uh, yes, it is about the SLTPB. So. Yeah. Uh, as for my understanding, you know, the question is, uh, Mr. Sahir, uh, what are the benefits to be a marketer in the SLTPB? But uh, shall we move to the, you know, shall we explain the question like this, you know, yeah. uh, are there any benefits? for the hospitality industry or the tourism industry from the marketing campaigns done in uh, SLTPB, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau. Uh, absolutely, Sri Lanka Tourism and Promotion Bureau, SLTPB, Sri Lanka Tourism and Promotional Bureau. Yeah. You, the answer is there, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotional <laughs> Bureau. The answer is there, your question has the answer. Yeah. Sri Lanka Tourism yeah. Promotional Bureau. So their job, or their job description as an organization is to promote Sri Lanka as a destination. When they promote Sri Lanka as a destination to overseas markets, overseas clients, when they organize trade fairs and travel fairs in ATM, Sate, wherever it is in the world, for us hoteliers, for us property owners, uh, our job is that much more easier. Because we don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars marketing overseas. They do the half of the job for us. So what? So what are the what are the benefit? Else can you have? You're reaching a global audience thanks to Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau. And even in this scenario, even with even with the, even with COVID nineteen, Sri Lanka Tourism and Promotion Bureau has not given up. You know, there is an article recently by the chairperson of Sri Lanka Tourism Board, I think, where she spoke about uh, how COVID-19 has affected us, but how we are going to rise through it, how Sri Lanka is going to open up in July 15th or August 1st, what are the actions that we have taken. So those kind of videos, they get, they get, they go on Facebook, they go on WhatsApp, they go viral. 
So that's Sri Lanka Tourism Promotional Bureau. Sri Lanka Tourism Promotional Bureau. Yeah, that's one of their tactics. That's one of their strategies. They take that strategy and they went with it, helping us. So what are the benefit uh, can we have? I don't know. But the main benefit is they are already doing all the hard work for us, for us to then easily follow through. Um, so, um, so Sachini Dilanka is asking about another question. Um, so what are the competitive advantages of Hotel Mandarina compared to the other <laughs> hotels? So what I are the competitive? competitive advantages of Mandarina. Uh, competitive, what are the, this is a tough one. This is a very, very tough one. What are the competitive, what are the competitive advantages of Hotel Mandarina? Really? What are the competitive advantages of Hotel Mandarina Club? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Competitive advantage of Mandarin and Colombo is see, we are located in Colombo 3, right? We are right next to the seaside. I'll write it, I'll tell you these points. You can write it down if you want. Uh, if you want to really go and see the seaside, you can go and see the seaside within about two minutes walking distance. We are a city hotel. We have all the facilities that you want. We have three categories of room from the standard deluxe to the premium categories of the room. We have a pool at the rooftop. Where you come after a really hard day's work, you have such a tough day at work as a corporate client. What do you want to do? You put your bags, you put your laptop, you get into your little uh, shorts, uh, and then you go down to the pool in the top. You sit down by the pool, you relax. You see the entire city still going in a, in a hustle and bustle, traffic jam, trying to get home. What are you doing? You're in the pool, you're relaxing. That's one of my competitive advantages compared to the other hotels. Uh, another competitive advantage that I have is, see, as a property, we do not uh, promote, uh, uh, how can I say, um, uh, un, um, liquor, alcohol, stuff of that nature. Some people might think that's a bad thing, but that's a competitive advantage for me because I want my guests who come to Mandarina Colombo to have a relaxing stay. I want them to come and relax in such a way where they are in their focus. They are not out of focus, but they are focused. You know, they have their freedom to go out and uh, uh, enjoy themselves. But they come to Mandarina, they have a peaceful enjoyment. It's like um, it's like coming to a, a, a relaxation center sort of thing, where you don't have all these catchy frills or anything. But that's a competitive advantage for us. So what else? I'll give you one more competitive advantage. One more competitive advantage for us is that um, I will not say customer service. You know, customer service, customer service. No, it's not about customer service. It's about personal touch with each and individual customer. We make it a point that when each and every customer comes during the breakfast time, either me or my boss or one of the FNB team members or one of our front office team members, we make it a point of guest relation. We go and meet the customer. We go and meet the customer. We have a little checklist. Okay, Mr. Tom, we put a tick against his name. We have the list of people who are staying inside the hotel at that time. Mark the tick against his name. Then, okay, we go, we meet him. Hi, how are you, sir? How was your stay? Did you enjoy your stay? Could I do something for you? Is there anything else that you want me to do? You must be here for work also. What is it? Just have a two-minute chat with him. He's happy. So that's a competitive advantage. It's not customer service. It's, it's, we call it, we can take it as a competitive advantage because uh, a lot of the hotels don't have that uh, approach. They will not be able to do that kind of approach. Who's going to, I mean, uh, unless you meet them in a general say, you know, when you're going to the restaurant, hi, are you going to you go for your breakfast? So I hope, I hope I have answered, I have I've answered those questions uh, for you as far as competitive advantages are. Uh, yes, Sahil. Uh, then uh, there's another question. So I, I think uh, we can have a kind of a quick answer for that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. As a city hotel, um, uh, the question is asked by uh, uh, Kasun Jairat. Uh, as a city hotel, what type of ICT tools that your hotel is implementing or using? Right. Uh, I don't think it's regarding ICT. I don't think it's regarding to any city hotel e alone. Uh, you know, any hotel nowadays has yeah. to have ICT in their background. You know, they, uh, 
we are not using pen and paper we have laptops we have computers so we have to have a network um, we are just one hotel but if we take uh, if we take so many branded hotels like shangri-la or cinnamon they have a chain of hotels so they have to have a network of computer networks that is vast array spread from one location to another with backup servers and all so we as a as a manager of Kalabu, i would say for a city hotel ict wise what we use is we have to have a pms system the property management system for check-in and check-out you have to have that system and then you have to have a post point of sale system when you sell something on a cafe or restaurant or something so you have to have the point uh, post system uh, and what are what are what are the what are the uh, uh, ict technologies that we use uh, yes we have i mean uh, you have to have a network and then you have to have this uh, payment gateways that you have to have when somebody goes to pay online payments you have to have and then you have to have ict technologies in terms of in terms of uh, uh, channel managers you work with so many OTS, booking.com agoda expedia c trip trip advisor uh, che price check uh, trivago so you have to have a array you can't be manipulating rates for each and every individual OTA. so you have a channel manager which is a very important ict tool for us where we can manipulate all these online travel agents all in one book. and then we have to have a reservation system any bookings that we get not only check in, check out, any booking that we get has to be entered into a system and has to be a reservation has to be made. So all those tools are coming in handy for us. And those I think I think that probably answered the question in terms of tools that we use. Yes, Mr. Sahir, uh, on behalf of the student, I am asking this question. So what is the PMS system you are using in Mandarina? Uh, the PMS system that we use is IDS Next. IDS. Uh, it's, an, it's an Indian, it's an Indian software. Um, it's um, quite a, um, easy easy to use. I think there's quite a lot of softwares like Taurus, there is Opera, uh, there's Brilliant uh, PMX, uh, and then there's Holidex. But we use a simple software called IDS, which allows you to do quite a lot of the functions. It's called IDS Next, NXT. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay. Um... Yes, uh, I think Malsha Abe Ratna is asking quite a, uh, you know, <coughs> contemporary question regarding the social distance and all. Uh, she's asking, uh, social distance is a must. How you plan to address that matter as a city hotel here? And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it would be a kind of a short term strategy as well. Yeah. To perform uh, when it's come to the post COVID 19 situations? Uh, social distance is a must, I must say. But your question, I must correct your question. Nothing wrong with the question, but I will say it's not social distancing, it's called practical distancing. Social distancing? No way. We have been more socially. We have been more socially together. See, even right now, I'm being social. All, all of you are being social with me. It's not social distancing, it's called practical distancing. If you become socially distanced, you will lose all the business. So we have to become practically distanced. And the way we do practical distance is, like I said, you know, uh, when you go to meet people now, you don't shake hands. You can't uh, say, hi, hello, how are you, how are you going? That's our traditional uh, greeting, our, our, our most liked greeting. We will stick to that. We say, are you going? And then you have to have physical distancing measures like you have to have a hand sanitizer every, I think, uh, four, five, six feet, every junction in the hotel, like one at the bell desk, one at the reception counter, one at the cafe counter, one at the lift entrance, one at the back entrance, one at the front end. So you have hand sanitizers everywhere, dispensers. And then you have um, sanitizing utensils where you spray on the shoes to, to make sure that people don't come with infectants inside the hotel. So those kind of, and then you have to have hand gloves, uh, face masks. Uh, so those kind of measures that are in place are already in place. We have to put that in place uh, and we have to abide by it. And this is not our requirement. This is a requirement by the Ministry of Health or the Health Services, Health Authority, the Ministry of MOH. They have enforced these things on us. We have to do this um, as of this thing. And, and, and uh, there's no way about it. I think uh, this, this kind of a question was asked in the previous session also from the previous, uh, I think, facilitator. Uh, but this is something that has to be done. We have no choice about it. 
unless the government says sorry uh, from today onwards hand sanitizer is called chicken and dipa fine until then we have to abide by it it's for your good it's for my good and it's for the entire uh, wellness or the good nature of uh, the industry and this is what our uh, frontline soldiers our doctors our nurses our army personnel that's what they are doing right now they are fighting for us and they are doing this for us so that we also do this for them so it's 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 not a um, matter to be addressed it's something that you must you must do it yep yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are having another one question, but before going to that, I would like to ask. Uh, uh, so in Mandarin, uh, in your sales and marketing department, what is the composition of your sales and marketing department? Uh, when you say composition, uh, uh, so how many members uh, attached with? Right. Okay. How, how many members? Right. How many members? Uh, as as a sales manager, I I work as a sales manager, so it's me. Then I have my immediate boss, who's a director, uh, and then I have a colleague who works with me. She she handles a lot uh, of uh, the the design aspects or the tools in terms of uh, marketing tools like social media and Facebook, Instagram, those kind of tools. She handles marketing on that aspect. And marketing on terms of um, travel agents, a little bit of the travel agent marketing or the corporate clients and the online uh, uh, travel agent scenario is done by me. And then we have my boss who handles a lot of the NGOs, non-government organization and the government official ministries and uh, and then also a lot of the corporate companies and the travel agents, like the big, big, big travel agents. He would handle them. He, you know, you it doesn't. It's not. It's not that he, we can't handle. We don't try and uh, overflow on each other's platforms. Let him do his thing. I do my thing. She does her thing. Sort of a thing. So we are three members in our team. But as a hotel industry, everybody is a sales and marketing guy. Even the chef is a sales and marketing guy. Even the housekeeping guy is a sales and marketing guy. Even the even the who the waiter is a serviceman is a sales and marketing guy, you know they all try and have to sell something. That's that's when our jobs become easier. Obviously, the majority is done by us, but then they also supplement it. They uh, make a cohesive team so that we blend in really well. Yes, actually, and uh, so so I will go for the next question. Please. So Madhumali. Lakshika is asking about, uh, I will uh, give you the summary of her question. Sure. So when you are making a marketing campaign, so marketing plan, so how you are going to convince others, I mean, convince other staff to adapt for that uh, marketing program? Uh, see, the, uh, when you're doing a marketing plan, uh, you cannot do a marketing plan if people are not on board. No point in you doing a marketing plan and saying, Menna make a thing, or Karla, you're a current marketing plan, like a matoni nature. No, it's not going to work. You have to get them into a round table discussion. You have to sit them down. You have to say, Look, uh, I need $15 million uh, as the revenue uh, this month. Can you do it? If you say, No, sir, I can't do it. So $15 million, sir, our normal itself, we do about $5 million, $3 million. So you ask him, How can you do it? So now it's COVID 19. Like, Discussion. You have to have the discussion with the team. You have to have the budget meetings. You have to have the discussion with the finance team. Similarly, you have to have the discussion with the housekeeping team. So you have to get all the heads of the teams have to be involved. And then you have to come to a mutual agreement with them. There are some things that as bosses, as managers, as senior person, like a GM or CEO or chairman, uh, they will say, you know what, I want this done. Please get it done. I don't know how you're going to do it, but get it done. But then it's our job, it's our uh, duty to to identify a respective way on how to swim through the turbulence and to get through that task. So it's not about it's not about uh, convincing. It's more about getting their permission, but with their blessings and with their input on how you can do a right marketing plan. Yes. We hope that we have answered the question. Yep. 
And uh, yes, for the so one almost last question. Yes, one so last almost question. we have reached the time schedule time. So in that sense, okay. I will pick up the last question for you, Mr. Shahid. Um, with this COVID nineteen situation as a hotel, what kind of safety promise that hope to going to give to the upcoming customers? So. Ah, okay. Very good question. Again, um, this is something that we are really facing right now. What kind of a promise are we giving our customers in terms of at, at the times of COVID-19 for our future customers? Keep yourself safe. We'll help you be safe. If you're not going to help yourself be safe, nothing that we cannot, we can do. If somebody comes to our hotel, if we present them with hand sanitizer and say there's hand sanitizer, please wash your hand. Here, there are pens there. Please take a pen and fill out the form. Uh, you know, and, and please maintain the distance. If a person is not willing to do that, if the person is not willing to honor those rules and regulations that we have in place to keep them safe, we cannot keep our promise. The promise, our promise is we will do our best that we can in terms of the regulations that has been provided to us by the Ministry of Health to keep you safe. But it's a two-way street. So to answer your question, with this COVID situation, what is kind of safety promise that, uh, that uh, we are going to give to the upcoming customers? The only promise that we can give the customer is come to our country, come to Sri Lanka. We, are, we have managed with two months of COVID without any serious complication. As a hotel, we can do the same thing for you. Only promise that we can give you is you uh, come to our country, we will keep you safe, but you have to keep yourself also safe. Once you keep yourself safe, we will help you keep yourself safe. So that's the only promise that we can do, especially in this scenario. Yes, definitely. So with that, I think we have moved to the end of the session. So, really? yes. Really? Yes, <laughs> so almost uh, three minutes past the seven. I think uh, so with that actually on behalf of the Department of Tourism Management I would like to say and convey my big thank to Mr. Uh, Shahir for sharing your knowledge and taking part with this webinar and sharing and uh, uh, I think you have cleared a lot of points clear to the students in a nice way and so thank you very much uh, and I hope you will join with us in future events as well and uh, and yes. uh, I also have to add something, yes, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'll, you know, it would be a kind of a, you know, missing point if I am not sharing this, you know, when this come to the Shahir and, you know, us and him relationship so far we had, uh, actually, you know, when this come to the Shahir, uh, I met him not in the industry actually, uh, we were not dealing with Shahir. Uh, we were dealing with also Colombo and can be all the hotels, you know, when we are dealing with Italy market. But we met due to one of my friends who is in the exciting holidays, if you remember the Rajita yeah. 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 Uh, he is the one who gave me your number, you know, when we are about to have a kind of a field visit to Colombo. So you allowed us, you know, it, it, it was the one last minute. It was the yeah. one last minute. So we had no options, but you said yes. You said yes at the one last minute. So until that moment to now, right? We have been uh, associating each other for two years, I think, yeah. that contact. Until that moment to now, you never said yes. Sorry, you never said no. <laughs> you, said, you never said no for me. Yeah. Right? Therefore, I would like to uh, highlight that thing and... Uh, I would like to uh, express my sincere thank, you know, all the time you are supporting us. I'm asking you all the time. I'm asking you at the last minute, but you are saying yes. So hey, thank you very much, Sahir. And uh, you are the one of the very nice, uh, nice person I have met, uh, you know, after I'm going for the academia. And when I'm uh, dealing with the industry, uh, I would like to say that you are the one of the, the nicest person, the nice person I have met all the time so thank you very much for that support and uh, as as sandar when he said uh, hope you will be keep in touch and keep helping us for the betterment of our undergraduates as well oh definitely so thank you very much sorry 
No, my pleasure. My pleasure. Mr. Iran, you, you've spoken very highly of me. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm not used to such praise. I must honestly tell you, I'm not used to such praise. I like to do my job. I like to get things done. And I like to do what I know best. I remember still, I still remember when Mr. Rajita, he called me and he said, you know, I've got such, such a thing. It's a cry. You help me out. I, I just, I just had no option. I said, no, what, you know what, you want help, I'll help you. And we are part of the same industry. You know, uh, you have to strongly believe in something called karma. You know, what you do good has to come around. So it's all, it, it goes on a philosophical way, but at the same time, it's what humans are meant to do for humans. That's what hospitality industry is all about. You know, so I'm always at help. Uh, you need my help. You can always just call me. Time is irrelevant. I, I, I always tell everybody, even, even your students, when I come and see them, uh, I always tell them, you know, my phones are switched on 24-7. Uh, you know, so you call me at any time. I'm always ready to help you. But uh, thank you. Thank you. I feel really obliged. I feel really obliged that you, you've spoken so highly about me. Um, so, you know, you, you, you both are fantastic people, you know, and uh, who would not want to help such fantastic people? That's my question. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you so much. It's thank been a pleasure. Thank you very much. So, we are honored to have you. And uh, so, you all of your words are quite... Uh, a blessing for us so thank you very much for all those wordings and uh, with that uh, at the same time i would like to thank for all our participants who have joined uh, with us until the end of the webinar so they might have been uh, they are quite uh, continuously joining with us for throughout this series of webinars so thank you very much for taking your time and for being a part of this webinar and taking your questions raising your questions and taking them into the discussion in this forum so thank you very much once again for all the participants and at the same time i want to give you one reminder so our sixth webinar is uh, will, will be on the first of june that means the coming monday starting from the same time uh, like today uh, it's basically on the digital marketing for tourism and hospitality. So I hope you will join with us for the next webinar as well. So with that, I think um, uh, we are going to wind up the session. And thank you, all, everyone. Thank you, all of uh, Mr. Sahir. Thank you, uh, Hiran. Thank you for joining and uh, take uh, take part of this discussion. And so stay as the same, safe. Yes, so until we meet up next time. So, so we'll meet up next time, yeah. Yes, so have a nice day and have a safe day and good night. Good night. Good night.